going to understand about IP addressing. Internet protocol addressing is basically a means of identifying every computer uniquely in a network. Let's say we have a network which I will represent by this huge rectangle and within this I have various computers. I want each computer to be identified uniquely whether I want it or not. The computers need to understand each other uniquely and identify themselves for which we need to have a means of identifying them. The obvious way that we can relate to this is computers understand binary which is made up of zeros and ones. What was brought about first which is still in use is IP addressing version 4 which gives identities to computers using a 32-bit addressing scheme. What happened with the explosion of the internet is that the number of IP addresses we get with 32 bits is insufficient. So we have got IPv6 which is a 128-bit addressing scheme. Now if you understand what is IPv4, it is pretty natural to appreciate what is IPv6. For example, if I were to represent 32 bits as space as follows, I have got 5, 6, 7, 8, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have here got 32 spaces which are grouped into four sets of eight places. To keep it very simple, 32 places can be given a zero or one. So 32 bits can be given. So what is the total number of IP addresses or unique identifiers I can get goes by basic permutation and combination if you remember your math. So to keep it simple, I will say there are 8 bits here and so on in all the 4 octets. So grouping the bits into 8 bits, each 8 bit is called as an octet of bits. And if I look at the 8 bits, the total number of spaces that can be filled of 8 places with zeros and 1s brings it to 2 to the power of 8 which gives me 256 combinations of the zeros and ones. So if that is the case and if I have 4 octets in place then the total number of IP addresses I can get is 256 multiplied by 256 multiplied by 256 multiplied by 256. So the total number of unique identifiers I can get in IPv4 is the multiplication value of this which gives us a certain number of IP addresses. Because we have zeros and ones in place, you can say that the smallest value or the minimum starting point would be 8 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and the largest value or the maximum value you can go is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 8 ones. This is the total range and in between you will have a combination of zeros and ones which fill the remaining spaces. Given that this is the total address space in each octet, if you use permutation and multiply it out, that is the total number of IP addresses we get. Given that this is what we get, instead of remembering the zeros and ones in place, we have a total of 256 possible combinations. So for our human memory purposes, we can say IP addresses would have a range in each octet with a value of 0 to 255. So if I were to say 0 .0 0.0.0.0, then that is representing all zeros. So the total number of IP addresses can be numerically represented as a range of 0 to 255. Dot zero to two fifty five dot zero to two fifty five dot zero to two fifty five. So that's how you get IP addresses, and thereby when you assign a computer an IP address, 
you get something like this. I will explain more about what, why did I take a 10 dot uh, IP addressing scheme in another video. But at the end of this video, you should have understood that what is IPv4? It's just a means of allocating unique identifiers in the form of IP addressing and how this works. And now that you have understood what is IPv4, I'm sure you now understand what is IPv6. This gives you a larger address space. With 32 bits, we got so many computers that can be identified in a network uniquely. With 128 bit, you get a 128 bit addressing in comparison to a 32 bit addressing in IPv4, which gives a much larger space for identifying computers uniquely within a given network. That's about an overview about IP addressing.